Hello everyone, this is the Breaking News Channel. And here is the news. 5 hours 9 minutes ago. It's 11 p.m. in Kiev. Here's what you need to know. As Sunday approaches in Ukraine, catch up on the latest developments here. Russians move out of Kiev region as officials look to the east, Ukraine's deputy defense minister said Saturday the Kiev region had been liberated from Russian forces. Meanwhile, Ukrainian presidential adviser Oleksiy Erstovich said heavy fighting is still expected in the east of Ukraine, near Mariupol, and in the country's south. He warned that the military effort will not be easy in those regions. Further evacuations, more than 4,000 civilians were evacuated through corridors in Ukraine on Saturday, according to the country's deputy prime minister including over 2,000 people for the besieged port city of Mariupol. The International Committee for the Red Cross team that departed Zaporizhia on Saturday morning as part of a renewed attempt to reach Mariupol have yet to reach the city, an ICRC spokesperson told CNN. U.S. to facilitate tanks transfer, the U.S. is expected to help facilitate the transfer of Soviet-era tanks within days to Ukraine, according to a source familiar with the plan. Ukrainian presidential adviser Mikhail Podolyak earlier on Saturday called on the U.S. and its allies to deliver heavier weaponry to Ukraine as the Russian military shifts its campaign focus. Gas keeps flowing, Russian gas continues to enter Germany despite Russian President Vladimir Putin's ultimatum on Thursday for unfriendly nations to pay for their energy in rubles starting Friday or risk being cut off from vital supplies. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said Friday that Russia would not turn off gas supplies to Europe immediately. Deliveries are incoming. Supply security is still guaranteed, a German government spokesperson told CNN. Five hours 40 minutes ago. Kiev region liberated from Russian forces, senior Ukrainian defense official says. From CNN staff in Lviv. Hannah Miller. Ukraine's deputy defense minister, said Saturday that the Kiev region had been liberated from Russian forces. She said in a post on Facebook that Bucha, Irpin, Hostomol and the whole Kiev region was liberated from the invader. CNN could not immediately verify that the entire Kiev region had been cleared of Russian troops by Ukrainian forces, but the Ukrainian military has in recent days regained control of suburbs around the capital which has remained under government control. The Russian military has said it is de-escalating around Kiev. Five hours 57 minutes ago. U.S. will facilitate transfer of Soviet-era tanks to Ukraine, source says. From CNN's Caitlin Collins and Jim C. Otto. The U.S. is expected to help facilitate the transfer of Soviet-era tanks to Ukraine, according to a source familiar with the plan. The tanks the U.S. is transferring to Ukraine will be Soviet-era T-72 tanks, which Ukrainian military personnel have experience operating, a senior U.S. official tells CNN. Those tanks will be delivered within days, not weeks, the official said, and will be delivered from NATO partner countries. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has repeatedly asked countries for more tanks. The New York Times first reported on the transfer. Seven hours 28 minutes ago. Over 4,000 civilians evacuated on Saturday, Ukrainian minister says, including more than 1,200 from Mariupol. From CNN's Mary Ionite and staff in Lviv. A total of 4,217 civilians evacuated through corridors in Ukraine on Saturday according to the country's deputy prime minister, Rana Virschuk. In a statement on Telegram, Virschuk said 1,263 people from the besieged city of Mariupol and the Russian-held city of Berdyansk reached the Ukrainian government-held city of Zaporizhia using their own vehicles. An evacuation convoy of 10 buses from the city of Berdyansk with more than 300 Mariupol residents also passed Vasilivka en route to Zaporizhia 
she said. Evacuations also continued in Ukraine's eastern Luhansk region, with a total of 2,650 people leaving the cities of Severodnitsk, Rubizin, Lizichansk, Kremina, Papasna, and Nizan, Vyrshchuk said. Vyrshchuk said 17 buses reached the city of Berdyansk from Zaporizhia and were expected Sunday morning to continue the evacuation of Mariupol residents. Some of the buses will try to reach closer to Mariupol, she added. Mariupol, which is ringed by Russian checkpoints, has been under weeks of intense bombardment. Ukrainian officials have described the situation there for the remaining residents as a major humanitarian emergency. Eight hours six minutes ago. Red Cross team en route to Mariupol has yet to reach besieged city, spokesperson says. From CNN Sharon Braithwaite in London. The International Committee for the Red Cross team that departed Zaporizhia on Saturday morning as part of a renewed attempt to reach Mariupol, have yet to reach the besieged city, an ICRC spokesperson told CNN. The team is spending the night en route to Mariupol and are yet to reach the city, the ICRC spokesperson said. On Friday evening, the ICRC announced in a statement that its team of three vehicles and nine personnel was unable to reach the city after arrangements and conditions made it impossible to proceed. Seven hours 22 minutes ago. What life is like in Odessa right now, as witnessed by a CNN reporter. Residents of Odessa are trying to find pockets of normalcy as the threat of a Russian attack from the Black Sea looms over the southern Ukrainian city. It's home. And we can, like, live a normal life. But that's for now. We don't know what's going to be tomorrow or in a week, law student Taimer Kravchenko told CNN's Ed Levandry while enjoying coffee with his friends at a market. But the center of the city is full of anti-tank barricades to fortify itself against an invasion, and displaced Ukrainians from areas that have seen the worst fighting have escaped to the city to find food and shelter. Olga Petkovich, her husband and their six children fled their village through a forest to escape shelling. Russian soldiers broke into their home and took everything, according to her husband. When we came here, the volunteers told us say what we need, but I'm ashamed. I've worked all my life and never asked anyone for anything. Now I have to ask, she said, tears welling up in her eyes. Her young daughter wiped away her tears and asked mother. Why are you crying? Because they were shelling us a lot, Petkovich responded. 8 hours 49 minutes ago. Russian gas continues to flow into Germany, government spokesperson says. From CNN Zinc Kapler in Berlin and Neve Kennedy in London. Russian gas continues to flow into Germany despite Germany's refusal to adhere to a decree from Russian President Vladimir Putin requiring payments for gas contracts to be made in rubles. Gas is flowing to Germany. Deliveries are incoming. Supply security is still guaranteed, a German government spokesperson told CNN on Saturday. The German government is in close contact with its European partners and will monitor the situation closely, the spokesperson added. German transmission system operator Gascade, which manages the German section of the Yamal Europe pipeline, told CNN Saturday that it couldn't confirm any cutting off of gas supplies to Germany. The Russian president delivered an ultimatum Thursday to unfriendly nations to pay for their energy in rubles starting Friday or risk being cut off from vital supplies. But German Chancellor Olaf Scholz insisted that German companies will continue to make payments for Russian gas only in euros. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov said Friday that Russia would not turn off gas supplies to Europe immediately. Nine hours 26 minutes ago. Russian strikes in Dnipropetrovsk region interrupt rail traffic, regional military governor says. From CNN's Olga Voidovich in Lviv and Mary Ionite in Atlanta. The head of the regional military administration of Ukraine's central Dnipropetrovsk region said Russian strikes had interrupted rail traffic and caused a fire. Valentin Reznukenko said a rocket hit the railway in Pavlorad district, forcing suspension of train traffic. One rocket hit the railway, he said.
tracks and electric lines are badly damaged. Train wagons exploded. Train traffic is suspended. Rescuers are putting out the fire. Reznikenko said no one was killed, according to preliminary information, but a second round hit an open area, causing a fire. One person was injured, he said. The Office of Ukraine's Prosecutor General said a criminal investigation has been opened into the attack. According to the investigation, on the afternoon of April 2, 2022, the armed forces of the Russian Federation, ignoring the norms of international humanitarian law, carried out a rocket attack on a civilian transport railway hub and an open area of the city of Pavlorad, according to a statement on Telegram from the office. As a result of the airstrike of the Russian invaders, guided missiles damaged railway tracks and freight cars. There were no military facilities on the territory of the railway hub, the statement added. Eight hours one minute ago. Death toll from Russian strike on regional administrative building in Mykolaiv rises to 36, official says. From CNN's Mary Ionite in Atlanta. A total of 36 people were killed in a Russian strike on the office of the regional military governor of Ukraine's southwestern Mykolaiv region on Tuesday, regional military governor Vitaly I. Kim said Saturday on Telegram. Kim said his secretary was among the dead. 9 hours 48 minutes ago. It's 7 p.m. in Kiev. Catch up here. As the sun sets on Saturday in Ukraine, here's what you need to know. Evacuation efforts continue, seven evacuation corridors were scheduled in Ukraine on Saturday, according to Ukrainian Deputy Prime Minister Renovirshchuk, including the route from the besieged southern port city of Mariupol to the Ukrainian government-held city of Zaporizhia. In addition, an international committee of the Red Cross team left for Mariupol on Saturday. Turkey has also offered to evacuate people trapped in Mariupol. More than 6,200 people were evacuated from Ukrainian cities on Friday, Vyrshchuk said. Attacks reported in eastern and central Ukraine, Russian forces targeted a major Ukrainian oil refinery in the central Ukrainian city of Kremenchuk in a series of strikes Saturday morning, according to a spokesperson for the country's military. At least four people were injured by explosions amid protests against Russian occupation in the central Ukrainian town of Anarada or, the country's state nuclear power company Energotom said. Additionally, a Luhansk regional official said Russian forces had shelled people evacuating from towns that have seen heavy fighting. And the head of the Regional Military Administration of Ukraine's Central Dnipropetrovsk region said Russian strikes had interrupted rail traffic and caused a fire. Weapons Delivery, Russian Ambassador to the United Kingdom and Drakulin told Russian state news agency TASS that if Britain delivers long-range artillery weapons and anti-ship systems to Ukraine, they would be legitimate targets for Russian forces. Meanwhile, Ukrainian presidential adviser Mikhail Podolyak on Saturday called on the U.S. and its allies to deliver heavier weaponry to Ukraine as the Russian military shifts its campaign to focus on the east and south of Ukraine. Photojournalist found dead, Ukrainian photojournalist Maxim Moxlevin, who worked for a number of major Western news outlets including Reuters and the BBC, was found dead with two gunshot wounds near Kiev. The Office of Ukraine's Attorney General said Saturday, 10 hours 19 minutes ago. Ukrainian presidential adviser warns days ahead will not be easy. From CNN's Nathan Hodge, Hand at ALM, and Mary Ionite. Ukrainian presidential adviser Oleksiy Erstovich said heavy fighting is still expected in the east of Ukraine, near Mariupol, and in the country's south. He warned that the military effort will not be easy in those regions. I think we will take back Mariupol, eastern Ukraine, and the south, he said. But, listen carefully, it will not be easy there. Erstovich and other senior Ukrainian officials have stepped up calls in recent days for the U.S. and its allies to deliver more heavy weaponry. Speaking during his daily briefing. Erstovich said the main directions of the military over the past day were the Kiev region, 
where Ukrainian troops reclaimed more than 30 settlements from Russian control. We seize a lot of equipment that is empty, without fuel, and transfer it to the armed forces of Ukraine, he said. That is, the offensive is going well. Erstevich, who gives regular briefings on Ukrainian television, also urged people to return to normal life, saying, in those areas that are liberated from the enemy, that do not pose an immediate threat, and even more so in the cities of central and western Ukraine or in the east and center of Ukraine, where there is no immediate threat, economic recovery is critical to restoring normal social and political life, even psychological life. 11 hours 15 minutes ago. Ukrainian photojournalist killed by Russian forces, according to Ukraine Attorney General's office. From Mary Ionite in Atlanta, Amy Cassidy in London and Eliza McIntosh in Lviv. A Ukrainian photojournalist who worked for a number of major Western news outlets including Reuters and the BBC has been killed by Russian forces near Kiev, the office of Ukraine's Attorney General said Saturday. The body of Moxim, Mox, Levine, who had been capturing the ongoing conflict, was found with two gunshot wounds in the Vishgorod district which sits just north of the capital, the Attorney General's office said in a Facebook post, citing preliminary reports. According to the preliminary information, the soldiers of the Russian armed forces killed the unarmed Moxim Levin with two gunshots, it claimed. His next of kin have been informed the office told CNN. Photographer Mark Ian Lysico told CNN that he was last in touch with his friend, known as Mox, on March 12, the day before he went missing in a district north of Kiev, where he had been reporting on the fighting and fleeing civilians. In their final conversations, Lysico said that Levin had asked him to come to the Ukrainian capital so they could cover the war together. Lysico who worked alongside Levin since 2014 documenting the war in Donbass, where they embedded with Ukrainian soldiers for weeks at a time, described his friend in an interview with CNN on March 24 as an energetic and tenacious reporter, who often looked like he had no fear. Since the war broke out eight years ago, Levin wanted to show the world what was happening in Ukraine, especially to Russia, Lysiko said. The best way to understand Mox is to look at his work, Lysiko said. When you watch Mox films or see his photos, you will understand him, without words. A criminal investigation is being carried out by the Vishgorod District Prosecutor's Office into alleged violations of laws and customs of war, the Attorney General's Office said, adding that measures are being taken to establish all circumstances of the crime. Levin began working as a photojournalist in 2006, according to his bio on Lens Culture, a photography resources website. He worked for Ukrainian news outlet Pound. Uan was well known in his field, having collaborated with Reuters, BBC, TRT World and Associated Press, according to the Attorney General's office. In a statement online, Pound. UA said Levin is survived by four sons a civil partner and elderly parents. Pound. UA said that in addition to journalism, Levine worked on dozens of photo and video projects for humanitarian organizations such as the World Health Organization, UNICEF and UN Women. In his bio, Levin described himself as a documentary photographer, videographer, father, human being. The Reuters news agency on Saturday said it is deeply saddened over Levin's death. We are deeply saddened to hear of the death of Maxim Levin, a long-time contributor to Reuters, in Ukraine, John Pullman, Reuters global managing editor for visuals, said in a statement to CNN. Mox has provided compelling photos and video from Ukraine to Reuters since 2013. His death is a huge loss to the world of journalism. Our thoughts are with his family at this difficult time, Pullman said.